Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. My name is Maria Luisa Garnica, and I am the Education USA Advisor here in Guatemala, in Guatemala City, in Central America. Welcome to our last regional webinar uh, of 2020. Don't you worry, we'll have more coming in 2021. My, um, this is a regional effort that we've been doing since we became 100% virtual, or mostly virtual. And I wanna thank our guests today who are going to talk to us about English test options and all of the region and all of the students and people interested in studying in the US at the higher education level, welcome. Before we get started, per usual, we wanna know where you're joining us from. Remember, we are um, also on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, make sure you let us know where you're joining us from in the comment section. And if you're here on Zoom, we're gonna send out a poll for you to respond, all right? So maybe you're joining us from North America, maybe Central America, maybe the Caribbean or another part of the world. And if you're joining us from another part of the world, make sure you let us know in the chat. While we're answering our, our, where we're joining from, please make sure that you share your questions that come up with our colleague Q&A Jackson Cruz if you are on Zoom. And if you're on Facebook, please just write your questions on the chat box. We will have an opportunity to respond to them towards the end of this session. Remember as well um, that this is a live event and it's virtual. And if there are some technical difficulties, please bear with us and be patient. We have um, some people from Central America, right? 35% of people from Central America 24 from North America, a couple from the Caribbean, and six people from other parts of the world here on Zoom. Welcome. Let us know where you're joining us from in the chat. We'd love to hear that. Before we jump in and introduce our lovely guests, I'm going to review real quickly what is Education USA. Remember that we are the network from the Department of State that provides you accurate and unbiased information regarding US higher education. So make sure you go to the site, educationusa.state.gov and explore all of the resources that are there, as well as our YouTube channel in Education USA Guatemala and all of our social media from the world because we share lots of resources, lots of content and uh, relevant information. All right, so you may know that there are a lot of options in the US. There are actually more than 4,000 universities and colleges in the US. And if you, are not, if you are not an English native speaker, they may require or they will for sure require some kind of English proficiency test. And that's what we're here to talk about. Today, we have four great guests from four different exams, different tests that are options for you to take. We have Hazel Mariscal from Cambridge Assessment English Test. We have Isabella Fernandez from ITEP. We have Johnny Frank from the Michigan Assessment. And we have Meredith Strokes from the Pearson Test. And they're all going to share with us different relevant details about their tests so that you can explore your options and decide which one fits best for you and your requirements and the universities and colleges you are applying to. So let's get started with Hazel. Please, Hazel, take it away. Thank you, Maria Luisa, and thank you, Education USA, for, for letting us be here with, uh, with you. And if I can share my screen to start the presentation, Yes, let me go to the presentation. Just give me one second. I will try to do the impossible. And, okay, can you see my screen now? Not yet, Hazel. Okay, yeah, so it's here we are. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, so well, let's start with the presentation. I will minimize this box. 
And well, as I said, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to talk with your potential uh, uh, students in the US. Uh, for me, it's very, very nice to, to have the time to talk with you. My name is Hazel Mariscal and I'm the Recognition Manager in Americas for Cambridge Assessment English. But who we are? Well, let me tell you that we are part of the University of Cambridge in, United, in the United Kingdom, one of the most prestigious universities in, in the world. Oh my God, I cannot pass the, the, the screen. Do you know how can I pass the screen? How about you try your keyboard and advancing with the, the arrows? Okay, I, I can now, thank you. So we are going to talk about Cambridge Assessment English, our qualifications and tests, and the recognition we have, especially in the United States. But like I was mentioning before, we are part of the University of Cambridge. We are experts in assessing English proficiency for more than 100 years. And what does it mean? Well, the University of Cambridge, as you know, is one of the most prestigious institutions in higher education sector around the world. And we are a department of assessment in, in this university. We are here to help people to learn English, improve their skills to the world. And how can they prove the skills to the world? Towards a certification, yes. So this is how we do it. This is the leading range of qualifications that we have. We have Cambridge English qualifications that are fit for purpose. We have also certifications for teaching English. We have our test, which is Lingua Skill, an online test that is proving the corporate sector and also in higher education. And the most, uh, most recognized test in the world that is IELTS. We are producer of IELTS with British Council and IDP in Australia. And some of our numbers, well, as I mentioned, we have more than 100 years assessing English proficiency around the world. We have a recognition of more of 25,000 universities in employers and government departments uh, worldwide. I can tell you that we have 13,000 universities and more of that, that recognize Cambridge English qualifications, more than 9,000 employees, uh, employers, sorry, and more than 700 uh, governments or, or, or other organizations within the governments. And our test in last year were taken by 6.5 million of candidates. And we have more than 2,800 exam centers in more than 130 countries <clears throat> in the world. These are our qualifications and tests. We have, as I mentioned, qualifications for every purpose. For example, if you see in this, in this framework, in this image, we have a series of colors and all these colors are different uh, levels of the common European framework of reference that apply to a level-based test. You can see the common European framework for those who don't know this information is the international standard for measuring the level of English of the person, the, of the people. And we go from an A1 to a C2, which is the most expert level of English. And in this case, our most common qualifications are the B2 first, C1 advanced, and proficiency. And we also have multi-level test, which is lingua skill that covers A1 to C1 and plus and also IELTS, which is the, the most recognized test in the world, which covers from B1 to C2. And here is an example, as you, Maria Ignacia, is a, 
a, a student that is graduating from high school and she wants to pursue a dream. She wants to go and study an undergraduate degree in the United States. And what is she doing? She has, she has to start his application process. As you know, she has to fill the, the application form. She has to, to write a, per, a personal statement. She has to do an essay, but also she needs, <clears throat> sorry, she needs to, to, to give, a, a, to apply with an English certification. And this English qualification, it's no other than a Cambridge English qualification, because in her school, in her secondary studies and in her, in her high school studies, she has been preparing for enhance the level of English that she has. And she has now uh, acquired a certificate with Cambridge Assessment English. And this certificate will open doors in several universities in the, in the United States. These qualifications, as I mentioned, they are in different format and they serve to different purposes. For example, we have the B2 first, which is a B2 level, according with the Common European Framework of Reference. We have also a C1 advance and a C2 preliminary, which are the most recognized certifications in the US of the Cambridge Assessment Portfolio. And also we have IELTS, of course. For example, if you are going to, to apply or if you are going to take a test like B1 preliminary, you will read simple textbooks and articles in English, write letters, emails, and talk about everyday subjects, take meeting notes and show awareness of opinions. And, and this is a B1 level. It's a, the lowest level that you will you will get recognition in the US. If you are applying, for example, for a community college, you can present a B2 first qualification because it shows that you can communicate effectively in an English speaking environment. It, you can be aware of the news, you can effectively communicate face-to-face, -face, write clear, detailed uh, opinions, explaining cons and pros of different points of view, write letters, reports, stories, etc. And for universities, the, the recognition that we have for C1 Advance is the one that we recommend for you because it shows that you can follow an academic course in a university level. You can communicate effectively and at a, at a managerial and professional level. It can also be recognized in the corporate sector as well as the others. But in this case, you will feel more confident showing your level in your English skills. Express with, your, with fluency in a high level position and understand perfectly all your, student, your studies. And the most expert level is Cambridge C1 C2 proficiency, which is our most important qualification in, 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 the, in the level of fluency. And, and it shows that candidates can deal confidently with different topics, with different texts, expressing opinions and is is so is is basically it's it's used by english teachers to show and to certificate her, their english skills so this is the most advanced certification that we have more for experts in english and well for a student's perspective what do we say about this the cost if you have already take a test like B2 first, C1 advance, or C2 proficiency, you don't need to take another test to apply to a university in the US because you already have taken this as part of your courses when you are in high school or in, in other study. So you don't need to take another test. You can go and apply and you can contact us to, to, to help you in your application process to get the recognition of your certification in the university you choose. It, the accessibility of of course, in this case, is, 
it's very wide for all the applicants to apply. We have different centers, hundreds of centers around the, the region in Mexico, in Central America and the Caribbean, in other parts of Latin America and including US and Canada. And it's paper based and it's available for all. The results, well, there is something you have to know about the results. Our certifications, our level-based certifications like B2 First, C1 Advanced and Proficiency are a lifetime certificate. What does it mean? That you don't have to renew your certificate every year or every two years. You may find that some universities in the US give a, a date of expiration according with their language policies. But for Cambridge, this is a certificate for a lifetime. And even when you finish your studies in the US, you will find that in very, in a vast, the vast majority of companies that recognize our certifications, they, they, will, they will accept your, your certificate and, and you will use this certification without any expiration date. So this is important to know. And also it's globally accepted. As I mentioned, we have more than 25,000 organizations around the world that recognize our exams. And in this case, you can apply to a university, but also to a company. In the corporate sector, we have widely recognized a, certifications like the ones that I already told you about. So please be, be confident with this. And you also will have the confidence that you are fully prepared to take your studies in English in the US with one of our certifications. For example, here, what do you think these hundreds means and these thousand means? What do you think this is about? Somebody can type in the in the chat to, to guess a little. Hundreds of what? If we talk about Cambridge English qualifications are very popular in Latin America, what do you think these hundreds means and these thousand means? Any guess? Well, in this case, hundreds means hundreds of exam centers where you can apply and you can take your, your certificate. And thousands are in school preparing students for our certifications. So it's a very large applicant pool that we are preparing for US higher education. So this is important for universities there in the States because they will find that a lot of candidates from Latin America America are applying with our Cambridge English qualifications. And also, you may think or you are wondering which universities can you apply with a Cambridge English qualifications? Well, we have a very wide list of institutions that uh, accept our, our certifications. And here, for example, I can give you some information uh, that it's related to, to other, other countries, you, you may see, for example, in UK and Canada, almost 100% of universities accept Cambridge English qualifications. The same in Ireland, in Australia and New Zealand. But what about the US? Well, this is a sample a ballpark of the universities that can accept your qualifications of Cambridge. Like, like LM, the MIT, like NYU, Georgia Tech, and it's only a reference, but you can see hundreds and hundreds of universities in the United States, as well as community colleges that accept our qualifications. And in this, in this endeavor, we can help you if you are in contact with one university and you are presenting your, your qualification, please let us know, talk to us, and we can help you if you need any, any support in this, in this endeavor, okay? So we are welcome in this long list of top private institutions and also public institutions in all the states of the United States of America, and you can apply with confidence. So 
as you can see, we, we are the producers of a wide range of say, qualification and tests, like the ones that I mentioned. So please try to apply and with, with our qualifications, let us know to support you. And if you need any additional information, please contact us. Here is my email. And I will be more than happy to, to help you and to, to, to be with you in this, in this effort. So thank you very much. And over to you, Maria Luisa. Thanks so much, Hazel, for, for all of that valuable information. Now we'll move on to the ITEP test with Isabella Fernandez. Isabella, feel free to share your screen. Yes, okay, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and share this now. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. It should be loaded now. Can you see that, Mario Luis? Yeah, okay, perfectly. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. All right, so thank you uh, for the Education USA NCAC uh, team and advisors for helping to put this on. I really appreciate the time to speak to everybody today virtually uh, about ITEP. So ITEP is the International Test of English Proficiency. And I'm going to talk about how to study in the USA with ITEP as a test that you can do at home. So a little bit about the history of ITEP. It's relatively newer compared to the other uh, tests that we're going to be hearing about today, but we would consider ourselves a teenager in the world of testing. We were founded in 2002 and we began really testing in 2008. And since then we have grown tremendously because of our convenience, our pricing and our accessibility. Now we have tons of public test centers all over the world, hundreds, if not thousands now. We also work with lots of partner schools and companies, and we also have a portfolio of both academic and professional-based exams. Let's move on to the next screen. All right, so some of you might well, what are the advantages of ITEP? So one of the big advantages right now is that ITEP can be taken at home, meaning no matter where you are in the world, you can take it any time at the convenience of, of, of your own at the convenience of your own home. So if you have a working or an internet connection, you can take the ITEP exam. Another benefit is that once you take uh, the ITEP exam, your score report will be sent to the school of your choice in 24 hours or less, guaranteed. In addition to purchasing an ITEP exam, you can get a free practice test to go along with that. So that obviously that you can practice before you actually take the real exam. In regards to the speaking and writing sections, we don't have any artificial intelligence grading those, but yet we have actual trained English speaking who are grading those sections of your exam. In addition to that, we have enhanced security. We have our own proprietary software called PhotoSure, which essentially takes in a, a picture of you every minute throughout the exam. It's very discreet. You, you won't know when it will be happening, but essentially that helps to prevent any testing irregularities. In addition to that, we have a browser lockdown mode and we also have unique content. So no matter how many times you take our exam, you're always gonna get a new set of questions. In addition to that, we have our sub scores that I will talk about later in this presentation uh, in your score report and also competitive pricing at 129 US dollars. And this test that I'm gonna speak about today is the Academic Plus. And that test is only 90 minutes long. 
Now here is a snapshot of the worldwide map. And as you can see in blue, we are growing worldwide. And so these are where you can find either test centers or also schools that are accepting I ITEP. As you can see, we're growing in South America, Central America. We started making ground in Africa. Russia, Asia, Europe, and co coming this year, 2021, we're actually gonna be start expanding in Australia as well. So I'm gonna talk about our flagship exam called the Academic Plus. The Academic Plus is the test that you will take to get into admissions at a university or a college or even intensive English program. So we have two different versions of our test. We have the Academic Plus, which is 90 minutes long. It goes over the five sections, grammar, speaking, listening, writing, and reading. And we also have the academic core. The academic core is shorter in length. It's only 60 minutes long and it goes over grammar, listening and reading. So here are the score reports here. I'm gonna break it down for you really quickly. Uh, also including the So when you take the academic plus exam and you complete it, this is the official score report that you're gonna see. So let's start in the first column. It's the overall assessment level. So there at the very, uh, at the very top, you're gonna see what your overall level is. So for example, this student got a 4.2. Okay, and next to it, you're gonna see what the breakdown is uh, when it comes to their level. Are they advanced? Are they beginner? Are they upper intermediate? Um, so right here, you can see a 4.2 4 is upper intermediate. And next to it, which is also really great, you're going to see what the Sefer um, scoring range is. So 4.2 ranges at a Sefer B2 level. And now in the middle, we have the ITEP sections that are also paired with Sefer level. So you're going to see here on grammar, listening, writing, you're going to see here the score, you're going to see the ITEP level score here on the side, and you're going to see level the student is at. Okay, so in the middle column, it really breaks down your score for you when it comes to graphs. So the first one here you see is grammar. So grammar, you're going to really see what you can uh, improve on, if it's nouns, if it's pronouns, if it's adjectives. You're really going to see what your strengths are, and you're really also going to see where you can improve on. And last but not least is the final uh, section of the official score report. So that's gonna include here in the breakdown, it's gonna include the Sefer level numeric equivalent. And it's also gonna give you tips on where you can improve on. Okay, so here we're just going to quickly go over the section breakdown. So as a student, you can really see what it looks like to take the ITEP plus exam. So for reference, the very first page is registration. You can show a government ID, you can show a passport, a student ID, just take a picture of that and input all your information such as last name, first name, country of residence, and so on. So the first section of all of our ITIP exams is grammar. So grammar is the first section. As you can see here from this question here, it says the student blank his homework two hours ago. And here you have your four set of multiple choice questions. Here on the bottom left hand side, you can see how many questions you have left. And also you can see the time. And when you have completed it, you can hit next. After you've completed the grammar section, we're gonna go on to the reading section, okay? So there's two parts to the reading section. And as you can see here on the left-hand side, you have a full uh, reading portion to read. Here on the right-hand side, you have your multiple choice questions. Also here on the bottom, you're gonna see how many questions you have left and the time. Also, you can push next as well. Next, we have the listening part. There's two parts as well. Here, you're going to listen to a short audio. Um, when you're listening to the audio, you can also type in your notes here, which is a new feature that we've also included into our exams, uh, which is really neat. And also bottom here, of course, you're going to hear the questions, um, how many questions you have left, and also the time. You can also adjust the volume here as well. Make sure you have a good set of headphones and a speak, uh, speaking portion as well so that you can speak into it. You're going to click next as well. 
Here's a listening to part here. Same thing. You're going to listen to a short story or a short explanation. Answer the question here. You can put your notes here on the left hand side and you can see how much time that you have left. Next is our speaking section. Here you are going to speak when you are prompted to. You have some time to prepare, which is here. And also here you have some time to speak. So for example, here you're gonna have 43 seconds to speak. You can adjust your volume as well. And also take notes so that you can kind of formulate your response before you need to speak. Next is our writing section here. So our writing section is really here on the very top, you have the topic. You go ahead and read it here. Here you can cut, paste, you can adjust your formulation of sentences. Also here is going to show you what your minimum word count is and your maximum word count and how much time, again, you have left. And that's pretty much it. Right now, you just saw the five sections of the Academic Plus exam. And um, if you want to see, you know, when test centers start opening up right now, they're all closed because of the pandemic. But once test centers start opening up, you can go to itipexam.com to see where the nearest testing center is for you. But currently, you can take all of our exams, including the Academic Plus at home. Again, the benefits of ITEP is that it's completely comprehensive, it's practical, it's convenient, it's affordable, and it's fast. It's convenient in the sense that you can take it at home. It's fast in the sense of that your school can receive your score report in 24 hours or less, and it's affordable at the price of $129. All this information can be found, again, at itipexam.com. And before I go, here's just a little excerpt of all the schools that are accepting ITIP right now. We have over a thousand plus and growing. So you can see NYU, Arizona State University, Western Illinois, all these schools accept ITIP and would be more than happy to have you as one of the international students. Again, here is my email and information here. So if you have any questions that are beyond this, uh, this presentation, feel free to email me at ifernandez at iteponline.com if you have any questions or would like to purchase plus exam. And again, I just want to thank the Education USA uh, Department of at the NCAC regions. And again, thank you, Maria Luisa, for giving me the time to speak about today. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Isabella, for all of that valuable info as well. Um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the people who are joining us all the way from Egypt and Chile and Brazil. Welcome everyone. And also, of course, welcome uh, all of our North America, Central America and Caribbean usuals. We, we're really happy to be closing the year with this special session. Now we're all going to hear from Johnny Frank from the, language, from the Michigan Language Assessment. So Johnny, you ready? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Thank you, Maria Luisa, and uh, thank you for inviting us to this. Let me just share my screen and I will be short and sweet. <laughs> All right, um, perfect. So that should be okay. Um, can I share PowerPoint? So hopefully you should be able to see my screen now or in any second. Yes. Brilliant, we're there. So thank you everybody for joining us. Um, it's late here-ish, it's certainly late in Egypt. My name is Johnny Frank and I um, work for Michigan Language Assessment. Some of you may be familiar with us, some of you may not be. So I will briefly introduce Michigan Language Assessment, who we are, what we do and, and who we're comprised of. Um, and then look at the Michigan English test, which is um, our higher education institution test uh, for the purposes that Hazel and Isabella have been exploring uh, prior to me coming onto your lovely screens. So Michigan Language Assessment, look at this little groovy animation. It gives us an idea of where we're from. Now, we are in a sense a, a bit of a teenager in, as well in the sense that we really started to emerge from around 2010 when we um, joined forces with Cambridge Assessment English. So Hazel, who you've just seen, is a very dear colleague of mine and we work together. 
So it started in the 1950s. And, and then, as I mentioned, uh, Michigan uh, at the time, it was the English Language Institute at the University of Michigan, looked for an appropriate strate strategic partner. And in this case, um, found and came together with uh, Cambridge Assessment English. Then we were Kamla, which was an interesting name that we changed for an even more interesting name a couple of years ago. And we called ourselves Michigan Language Assessment. So we have on the one hand, uh, the University of Michigan aspect, and on the other hand, the Cambridge Assessment English aspect. And we are based, well, I'm based here in Mexico City in the region, but the headquarters are based still on campus in Michigan, well, in Ann Arbor in Michigan. So just to um, also emphasize that this is a, a not-for-profit collaboration that the two universities have. Um, either side of the Atlantic, they're both hugely important and prestigious universities that, are, that have got their history and they certainly got their background in English language learning, English language teaching and English language assessment. So it's the perfect marriage in 2010, that's what I'm saying. Um, so together we have a, a strong portfolio and a very strong history, as we say there, over 150 years of combined language assessment expertise between us. Um, this is to show that kind of unified front uh, with the hands in the middle of Cambridge Assessment English and uh, Michigan Language Assessment. For those that you've joined late, that is part of a wider family underneath uh, the University of Cambridge and Cambridge University Press, which you've probably heard of. So we're quite a big organization with these, these specific entities that do specific things in, in, in Michigan's case, um, English language assessment. And we, we're part of a wider portfolio that provides a range of educational solutions. So what's the Michigan exam journey like? What does it look like now? What's it going to look like in the future? That's what I've got the next seven minutes and 30 seconds or whatever left to tell you about. This is the overall picture. We have um, the Michigan English test, which is the principal test that we're going to be speaking about today. We also have two other tests and we've got people joining us from um, the Andes I hear and from Brazil and even other parts of the world. They might be familiar with ECC and ECP, which are what we call level-based tests. MET is different. It's a, it's a multi-level test that ranges from A2 on the Common European Framework to C1. So within that same test, you have a range of levels. And obviously we have gone through the, the appropriate li um, linking research and, and um, and studies to calibrate our scaled scores to the common European framework of reference for languages. So, MET, it's a four skills test as, we've, as you would expect. It has academically relevant task types. What do I mean by this? We'll look at it a little bit later, but basically the questions that we ask in the exam, we're thinking of the type of skills and the type of subskills that you are gonna to have to prove on a day-to-day -day basis when you eventually go to university and you're studying and you're listening in a lecture theater or you're working in study groups with people or you're reading various texts. Now at the moment it's still paper-based. We do have some test centers open in this region um, and, and that's thankfully on a positive curve of more and more opening and being able to, with the appropriate um, permits and with the appropriate conditions, they're being able to um, administer paper-based tests. But in the future, not too distant future, thankfully, next year, which is now a matter of weeks away. In fact, it's next month. That's scary, isn't it? Uh, we will have a digital offering and that digital offering will include at home testing as well as testing within um, the, the premises of a, of a registered and authorized test center. So just a bit of an overview of what you receive. <clears throat> we have the skill scores, as we said, um, as you see here, they're calibrated per skill to, to the CFR. Uh, so you get an idea of your, if you've got, if you've got 52 say, and you, it's a B1 on the Common European Framework. This is a skill we also use for other tests. So it's a very reliable indication of where you are on the CFR. The, the audio and the lexical input is all American English, but you can answer in, I'm not an American English speaker, as you might notice, I'm actually a, a British uh, English language speaker. But if the input lexically and in terms of audio is American, but you can, re you can respond in English um, from Britain, from Australasia, from the Americas, from India, from wherever, as long as you're consistent with how you apply that. There's a range of contexts which you'd expect, and that, that's to be able to 
not just uh, discriminate between levels, but also the sub skills that you're carrying as a, an English language learner and, and an, an aspiring student um, that you're able to show in certain contexts what you can do, not just you know, listening is a very big skill underneath it. What are the pieces and the mechani mechanisms that work that, that make that work and make you proficient in that? You'll see that it's backed by, that means Cambridge Assessment English and the University of Michigan. So on the certificates and on the score reports that you receive, you have the, the emblem of both educational institutions as well as Michigan language assessment across the top. We have fast results for a paper-based test. It's a week at the moment for two skills and two weeks for four skills. Obviously in 2021, that's gonna be reduced dramatically given that it's gonna have a delivery which is gonna be digital. Uh, at home and all that kind of stuff. This is more for reference. Um, you can find this information on our website, but I will pick up on a couple of things. It's just to give you an overview of how many parts per per skill you you find, and, and a, bit, a bit that I'm going to show you in a second about the actual question types. Just a quick note here to say when it becomes a digital or a computer-based exam, MET will not change in terms of format. So I'm not kind of giving you news or information which is going to be old in two months or three months it's going to be the same and you'll see there that you've got a spread of different um, sections or parts to, to each of the listening parts you'll see that within each of them there's a and, and you'll notice this as a, someone who taught before uh, English with to, to, um, to all kinds of different uh, first language speakers um, you'll know that when you want to take an exam, you want to look at the exam. So please go to our website, michiganassessment.org, take a look at the exam, and you'll get a feeling for the type of tasks that are there. And it'll give you an idea of whether you like the exam or maybe you don't. And at the same time, if you do like the exam, then check out our test centers and check out the recognizing organizations. But you'll see when you're seeing the, when you're looking at the format, that there's like a graduation in difficulty. So take the reading, for example, you might, you might start with um, the grammar component with some lexical um, input there. And then you'll move on eventually to multi-text. So multi-text is quite a complex sub-skill where you're looking across different texts to be able to find the answer to a question. It's quite a sophisticated sub-skill, which is of a higher level. And it's a kind of sub-skill that you'll need in reading when you're at, at, in first and second and third languages when you're, when you're at a higher educational level. Just picking up quickly on speaking, you'll see it goes from a basic picture description, which is probably around the A2 level, as you saw, it's from A2 to C1. And eventually you're gonna be asked to argue and convince the, the interlocutor, the examiner, or in the future, the computer, um, of a particular um, point of view. So there's a real um, range of, of different types task types for you to demonstrate your level. This is just a, a bit of a, I mean, I think all of us here, all of the people presenting uh, are working with multi-level tests and you'll, you, you will, will know uh, the participants that they can be used for various purposes. There's an advantage to them in terms of you can, you can see where you are at any given time. You might be stronger in your receptive skills and your productive skills. And it's nice to be able to take an exam that can encapsulate that. And it's quite motivating for when you go on and develop your skills to say, well, when I took this, when I took a test three years ago, I was really good at reading and listening, but my writing wasn't great and my speaking was, was really below. So you can really focus your attention on the skills that you need to work on to be able to get maybe that B2 or C1 equivalent level for admission into a college or university. Speaking of which, um, MET is, is, has got a whole breadth of recognition. Um, please check out our database on our website. We've got state nursing boards in the States. We've got higher education institutions in both the US and Canada, which are relevant to this particular region. And recognition is growing on a weekly basis for us, particularly given the transition that MET will have from being paper-based to also having the, the chance to take it from your own home or from computer-based in a, in a test center. I've said enough about that already, that there's a digital portfolio coming next year. Um, so hopefully we'll have another webinar at some point to be able to talk about that and have updates from other providers. Um, and the real emphasis for our digital portfolio, which will not just be MET, but will be MET Go, uh, which is a, an earlier exam for, for a younger um, audience, um, but basically is, is to increase availability, increase accessibility, and to give a, an overall more, an even more satisfactory candidate experience. 
And that brings me to an end. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn if, you've, if you're on LinkedIn. If not, you can reach me by contacting the, the central email address, which is on the screen there. Um, and that's also on our website. Thank you. And I will go back to our compare for this evening and stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Johnny, so much for, for the information. And, um, and now, last but not least, we have Meredith Strokes, who's going to share with us lots of valuable information on the peers and tests. Please take it away, Meredith. Great, thank you. Um, you can go on to the next slide. So I'm Meredith Stokes. I'm with Pearson Test of English. Um, I'm sure some of you guys have heard of us before. Um, I asked the question if anyone has taken a language test and I got a few responses um, of TOEFL. Um, so it's nice to know that there are some other, some of you guys have some experience in, in what you were looking, what you're gonna experience in a language test. Um, I think the main point, and you've probably gathered from the rest of the speakers is that there are a lot of options. So um, it's, I think, important for you as a test taker to find the test that you're most comfortable with and that you feel that you can perform the best English um, capability to demonstrate your language proficiency with. So um, that being said, um, PT Academic is a computer-based language test. So a lot of students have told us that they feel more comfortable um, having their scoring done electronically. So everything with PTE from start to finish is electronic. We're a computer-based test. We're computer-based test, um, and it's the most unbiased and secure because it is all computer-based and all um, the automated technology for scoring. Uh, right now, we have test centers in 81 countries. Um, we've got hundreds of them, but we do test in 81 countries. If you are looking for a test center in um, South America, Central America, Mexico City, Bogota. We also are gonna be opening a center in Panama soon. Uh, by the end of the year, which yes, I realize is one month, we'll have um, another 20 something test centers come online. So um, we're accepted for Australian, New Zealand and UK immigration purposes. 100% um, of universities in Australia and New Zealand, as well as 98% in the UK. Um, in the US, we are accepted by over 2,000 universities. Um, as Maria Luisa pointed out, there's over 4,700 universities in the United States. So um, that's, that's a lot of schools. <laughs> um, and, and just like the, the Michigan test, our recognition is growing weekly. So um, if there is a school that you're interested in taking your PTE test to and they don't accept PTE, please let us know, we can help you with that. Um, I think they, the best part about PTE for most of our students um, is that a student can register, sit for the test, and send your scores to the school within a little as four days from start to finish. Um, and so if you're looking for something, you're in a time crunch, you haven't sent um, an application, you've got that window closing, this is a great, um, this is a great test for you. If you are the student that wants to get this done and you want to uh, move forward and have your scores under your belt in four days, um, if you you know, want to take a little bit longer and, and schedule your test out, um, you have the ability to do that as well. You can move to the next slide. Thank you. So um, this just talks a little bit about PTE and what makes us um, a little bit different. Uh, you can book online 24 hours in advance. We test 365 days a year. There is a test center that tests on Christmas. Um, it is a single three hour test. It will not be split into two different sessions, but the test doesn't have to take three hours. If you answer the question, you can move forward to the next. So um, the test takes, basically you can get it done as quickly as you would like to. Um, again, it's the most accurate uh, because of our scoring technology um, when compared to TOEFL and IELTS. Um, you can move down to the next slide. The other nice thing to know is the score return time. In 2018, it was two days. In 2019, it was 1.2. Um, 2020 did throw a wrench in, in our scores, just like it did everything else, but it went up to 1.8. So um, not bad. It's still less than two days. Most of um, our, was our average turnaround time. 
Um, if you are looking for a test center, all of this information is available online. Our website um, will basically take you through this, but um, this just kind of, I created to give this you as a test taker an idea of the, the difference between the two. So um, with human readers, you just have two separate people looking at something. So this is an example of um, one student giving an answer and the interviewer saying, well, that's an average answer. And the second interviewer saying, well, that's a fantastic answer. Uh, to the next slide, you can see that when you are in this with a machine rating, the um, answer stays the same. So your standard error of measurement is gonna be a lot lower. You can answer the same the same question and it'll be the same across the board. Um, you can keep going. Uh, I put in a little slide comparing us uh, mainly to IELTS and TOEFL as those are the other two that have um, the main recognition. So most people are more familiar with those. So you can review this later. This is all available as well. Um, I think we're going to be sharing this uh, presentation. So um, if anybody would like it, you can feel free to email me as well. Um, if you'd like to book PTE, it's very simple. If you go to our website, again, pearsonpte.com, there is a little orange button on the top right, and you just click on that, and that will take you through the journey. Um, you can also search for available seats and test centers and look at the costs without registering. Um, you can just skip that and keep going through. Um, but if you would like to book your test, that's how you start doing it. You can also do all of your prep work, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, the test is about $200 and it's in line with the other tests. Preparation, we have so much preparation. So just for being on this call, if you will shoot me your email address, I will send you a uh, practice test voucher um, for the PTE so you can take that for free at home um, and become familiar with the test, see how your English is, is feeling. Um, it is just, it's very similar to the real test and experience. You will get a score report afterwards, but it is not an official score report. So you can't apply uh, to a school with it, but it would give you an idea of what you would score on the actual PTE if you were to take it on the same day. Um, so we have an app. We also have a score guide. We have test taker tips um, we, and we have a free introductory course. So um, there's a lot of resources on our website. If you go to the next page. Um, there's three more, um, and these also have links in them. So feel free to click on any of them in the, um, the deck when you get it, and they will take you through it. But again, you can find all of this on the Pearson website. You can go to the next and to the next. Also, there's a YouTube channel, and the YouTube channel is awesome. There are a lot of test taker videos um, walking you through the format. Um, there's interview with the test development team. Um, it's just, a, a, there's really a lot of resources. So if I could direct you to um, one thing other than our website, it would probably be to YouTube. You can keep going. Um, what to expect on test day, please arrive 30 minutes before. Um, you will put all of your belongings in a locker. You will not be able to take anything in with you. They do um, wand you. They do check your pockets. Um, it's very secure testing environment. We also use a palm vein scanner um, as well as official ID scanners. So just know that all of the security is very um, tight. So please arrive 30 minutes before to make sure that that um, takes place. Uh, we also have um, three sections of the test. We score speaking and write, speaking, we score writing, we score reading, and we score listening. Um, but there are those three different, um, we have two of the categories in one together. So um, you can see how that's broken down and the different um, options. There's some reordering of paragraphs. Uh, so you would have an introduction, um, the meat paragraph with um, your main point and then a conclusion. And uh, it's, it's up to you as the reader to organize how these go and flow to make. So um, it's just one example of, of, an, of a PTE question. Thank you. I'll scooch right on through here. So this right here is our um, score report. It gives you your score up in the top corner. Um, you can see she scored an 80. The top score is a 90 with the PTE. Uh, a TOEFL 79 is equivalent to a PTE 53. 
And um, you can also now assign your PTE score to a school without um, actually physically assigning it. You just give your score report number and any school or organization can verify your score. Uh, the other interesting and nice thing for a test taker to note is that there are unlimited scores for the PTE. Uh, we don't charge per score even after a certain number. Um, once you've taken the PTE, the results are yours. Um, you can continue. So um, again, I, I told you just to, you can put your email. A lot of you guys have sent me the email addresses and I will shoot you guys a test voucher. But if you wanna click on this, um, Pete, can everybody, I guess I should ask that. Maria Luisa, can you guys um, click on that link? Because if you can't, um, please go to kahootit.com, kahoot. Um, yes, they, they, won't be, they wouldn't be able to click on it, you are yeah. right. So let me give them the, the code to get in. I'll type it in the chat box and, um, oh, perfect. There is a Kahoot quiz and you just have to enter the pin and the top participants, the top score will win a full voucher to the PTE. So um, it's a nice little quiz. It has six or seven questions, shouldn't take but five or six minutes. So um, I'm gonna, finished my session and I'll type that in the chat box for everyone. So thank you guys so much. Um, and again, I'm Meredith Stokes. I'm with Pearson Test of English, also on LinkedIn like Johnny. So if anybody needs anything, you can find me there as well. Thanks so much, Meredith, Johnny, Isabella, and Hazel for all of that great information and details that you shared with us today. We did get a couple questions. So I would like to begin with some questions that all of you can respond and then I'll move on to specific questions that we received for some of you. So um, let's see, one of the questions that applies to everyone and I think Meredith touched upon it and I think everybody touched upon it, but where can I take, take these tests? Are you all working virtually or does it have to be physical and where can people find this information? So can we begin backwards? Let's start with you Meredith and then we'll go Isabella, Johnny and then Hazel. Sure, so I did put the Kahoot challenge in the um, inbox there for anybody. Um, PTE is taken in a test center. Um, all of our test prep can be done online but is in a test center. All of the test centers are online. Um, there is a page that's updated daily with the COVID closures and reopening times, um, but ours are done via in person in a test center. Johnny? Yeah, similar, similar to um, Pearson and Meredith. So through, through our test center network, which you can find on our website. And next year there will be at home options, but for now through test centers, yeah. Thank you, Isabella? So all of our ITIP exams can be taken at home. So at the moment, no matter where you're at, you can take any of our uh, ITEP exams at the comfort of your own home um, because of all of the test centers right now uh, for ITEP are closed because they are in person and those dates for them to be reopened depend on each country. That information can be found on our website. But as mentioned, all of our exams can be taken at home, can be purchased on our website or can be purchased uh, directly with me, uh, but yes, at home. And Hazel, you're muted. Thank you. In the case of Cambridge qualifications, the centers in this case are respecting the, the, the measures that the different governments are taking. I put the link in the in the chat so you can see the, the information there. And uh, in the case of other tests like in lingua skill, it can be taken online with remote proctoring, but for applying in the US, it's important to, to check the centers calendars. All right, thank you. And one other question that applies to everyone. Could you share with us what is the validity for each of your exams and if there are any age limits? Can we start now with you, Hazel? 
Well, the validity is is uh, the recognition that we have if the universities in the United States, for example, and around the world give- I'm sorry to interrupt. I think they mean in years. So how, how many years does it, uh, is it, is it valid to it's use? It's for lifetime. In the case of Cambridge English qualifications, it's for lifetime, yes. And is there an age limit to take it? No, in the case of B2 first, C1 advance and proficiency, they have to be adults. In, in this case, we have B2 first for schools, for example, that it can be taken for students that are in, in the last years of higher education, but it's uh, basically it's for, for adults. Thank you, Hazel. Isabella? Yes, so our ITEP test scores are uh, in line with the industry standard of two years. So when you take our exam, it's good for, for two years. After that, you would need to retake the test again. Um, in terms of age, um, we, there's no uh, age range for the academic plus. It's more based on content wise. So it's, it's, it's basically university slash college level content. If you're, let's just say in middle school or high school, we have another exam called the Slate Plus, and that content is gear, geared to a younger audience uh, anywhere from 12 on up. Thank you. Johnny? Sure, yeah, I think the two years is, is more related to um, particular visa regulations in countries such as the UK and Australia. For MET, uh, we don't have a... Um, an expiry date. I mean, in testing, we talk about validity and it means a whole different thing. So we say expiry date would be, no, we don't have one on the certificate or the score report. And we leave that to the discretion of uh, the accepting institution, whether that's a, a college, university, or into the corporate world. Thanks. And Meredith? Um, so just like the others, the same is two years it's valid for. Um, as far as, I'm sorry, when you asked about the age, were you asking if there is a, an age requirement? Because we do have a PTE young learners, but um, I think the question might also be, do you have to be 18 to take the test? Um, and the, the answer is no, you don't, but you do have to have parents um, sign off if you are under 18 with PTE and there is a form online. Um, and so you can just go to the website on pearsonpte.com and, and search that. Um, but we do have a suite of tests for young learners as well as business tests also. Um, but PTE academic is really geared towards college um, and secondary education entrance. Thanks so much. And now we have a couple specific test specific questions. So for example, someone's wondering, Somebody asked, I'm supposed to take the FCE Cambridge test this year. Do you have any tips in order to success uh, while taking this test? Hazel? Yes, he, that person, this student can go to our Cambridge website. We have plenty of resources and practice materials that can be used for, for preparing for our tests. So my recommendation is to go and visit our website and seek for all the materials that we have there. Okay, thank you. And uh, for Isabella, there are two questions. How long has ITEP been on the market and what is it, uh, what, what is it needed to become a test center for ITEP? So ITEP has been around since 2001, 2002. That's kind of when we first got into the, into the testing arena. Um, in terms of what does it take to be a test center? Was that the second question? Yes. Okay, so what, what needs to be done to be a test center is uh, that would need to be um, passed on to my colleague, uh, Min Min. She is the one that deals with um, an ITEP, 
how to be an ITIP testing center. It's relatively easy. Um, there's a form that you need to fill out. It has kind of questions like how many, how big is the, the office, how many seats, how many chairs there are. Um, and there's a little bit of kind of um, requirement in terms of that, but that area is dealt with with her. Um, I'll be more than happy to reach out to that person who's asked that question and then we can chat about it further, but it's relatively easy um, as well. You can go on to itepexam.com and go under how to be a test itep testing center and there it would also have more information in regards to that. Thank you. And um, wrapping up a little bit. It, so I wanted to, to somebody asked what are some of the changes in the administration procedures for these tests? So I don't know if there are any details that you would like or may be able to share regarding these changes, you know, virtual changes, foreseeing anything to change in the future, but somebody's wondering about it and maybe we can start wrapping up our session with that answer. Meredith, can we start with you? Sure. Um, so I think that, I think overall people are going to schools, universities are, are hungry for students, for international students. And I think that they are more willing to work with you as students with really almost any language test that you might choose as long as it is a valid language test um, and has, you know, like everybody on this call has gone through kind of all of their demonstrations of, of who accepts and they have lots of studies. Um, but there's um, there's a lot of options. But I think the main point that I would make is that um, it's worth reaching out to schools. Uh, there's lots and lots of preparation material. I think every test, um, we gave a lot of free material during the pandemic for our, our test takers to be able to prepare um, because test centers were closed. Um, we do offer you know, things via computer that they can do as well. But I think just stay positive, keep trying. I know that um, things are gonna change and I, I just think that things are going to be a little bit more positive going forward. That's, that's my hope at least. Thank you. Johnny, what do you think? We should end on Meredith's very optimistic note, I think. No, I, I agree. I agree with that. I think there'll be changes to go right back to what the question was saying. I think there'll be changes in terms of maybe hybrid delivery, even once we're past this rough patch. And you're going to see that reflected in 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 how we deliver assessments, I think, which, which I was alluding to in my presentation, that not just MET, but MET Go, which is a younger um, a test aimed at a younger test taker population that will also be having the, the treatment of being able to be taken in much more flexible ways to, 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 to fit a bit to fit better with what's going on with um, education, which it will be better, it will improve. I, I, I believe the same, Meredith, so I'm glad to hear it from you. And I think that, but I do think we'll, we will change the whole kind of education sector, uh, not just thinking about schools and universities, but even around that in terms of institutions that offer support for English and, and whatnot. There will be that hybrid mode, I think, will we'll, we'll, we'll kind of blend into that and assessment has to adapt to that, I think. Thank you, Isabella. Yeah, so I've been uh, working closely this past year with, uh, you know, schools and university directors and, you know, they really appreciate the pivot that ITEP has done in terms of at home testing, um, not only on their side, but also on the student side, we see a lot of students that, you know, they don't have access to testing centers because they're just not open. And so having an option to take a test at home is very convenient and it's, um, it's, it's, it's quite um, accessible for a lot of students worldwide. And so we are really glad that we were able to pivot that and offer that option to uh, students. Um, and in terms of security, you know, that's really important for a lot of schools now, like if tests are being taken at home, you know, we would want higher security. So we have also adapted to that by adding the photo sure, uh, by adding browser lockdown. So really it's a win-win for students and schools as well. Um, and just to kind of keep with the theme of positivity um, at this time, we really encourage students, you know, to, um, you know, take their time to 
prep for any tests that they decide to take. As you all know here, we've given everybody testing options. And, you know, really the schools are, you know, are excited to have international students apply. So, you know, no matter what testing option best fits for you, I, I wish that um, you can, you know, uh, see all the options out there and choose the one that's best for you. Thank you. And Hazel, what do you think? Well, I think in, in the case of Cambridge Assessment English, we understand that the, the, this context is, is very, very complex and we have to be flexible because we need to, to respond to the necessity of the students in, in university. So in this case, I think in the following months, we will find ways to, to serve better our candidates. Thanks so much, everyone. And thank, thank you all uh, for joining and for sharing your time and, and the insights on, on the different options for English as second language tests. I want to emphasize that Education USA is here for you to help you navigate the somewhat complex process of applying to US higher education institutions. But the commander of that trip is you. Right, so you are the one who has to lead and search for options and seek us out, as well as practice your English. English, like any other language, is a skill, and there are options if you look for them. You know, today we got a lot of resources and lots of websites and lots of ways to improve your English and practice it. It's a skill, so if you don't feel 100% yet comfortable with speaking or writing, it's something that you can work at. And uh, thank you so much for joining this last 2020 regional webinar for the North America, Central America and Caribbean region. Education USA wishes you the best holiday season. Please stay safe. And thanks again to our guests for being with us and hope to see you again soon in 2021. Bye bye. Thanks thank for inviting you. us and thanks for attending. Bye. See bye ya. bye. Thank you all.